In the mid-19th century, with the Cherokee Nation divided over issues such as slavery, assimilation, and the U.S. Civil War, a mysterious group arose. In this Cherokee Almanac, we'll explore ways the Pin Indians fought a war within a war. In the time leading up to the American Civil War, tensions were also mounting in the Cherokee Nation. Old resentments stemming from the Cherokee Nation's forced removal from the southeastern U.S. were simmering just under the surface. By the late 1850s, several secret societies emerged within the Cherokee Nation, divided along political ideologies. One of the most mysterious of these groups came to be known as the Pin Indians. The Penn Indians were a secret society that was part of a larger group that was known as the Katua Society. They were anti-slavery. They were um, trying to uphold those traditional Cherokee values. And the Pins were actually born out of that. Influenced by Baptist minister Evan Jones and his son John, a group of community leaders from across the Cherokee Nation met in secret on April 29, 1859. They created a constitution for their own secret organization. In private, they referred to themselves as the Katua Society. The pens laid out some ideas about abolition, um, but I also think they were um, thinking about the kind of detrimental class divisions created by um, the system of slavery within Cherokee society that undermined older ethics within the, within the Cherokee nation. And along comes, uh, you know, some of the Baptist ministers, you know, Reverend Jones. He reminded a lot of people who were traditionalists in their beliefs in Cherokee tradition that the Southern way and slavery did not fit into their world. In order to safely recognize one another, the group had a unique way of identifying its members, including code words, a secret handshake, and a hidden symbol on their lapels. Because it was somewhat of a secret society and, and people did not go around and you know, openly tell each other that, you know, that they were a part of the, of the, uh, the Katua Society. They would wear uh, uh, pins on the back side of their lapel so that they could identify each other. They were cross sewing needles. Other times it was actually a pin that looks very much like uh, what we see as a breast cancer ribbon today. The way that they become known is because they introduced each other, were, were meeting each other, they would sometimes fix the collar or the lapel on the other gentleman's jacket, and you could feel underneath that there was a, a pin under there. Very little was known about the Pin Indians themselves at the time, in part because members who divulged Katua Society secrets agreed that in doing so, they would forfeit their own lives. As the U.S. Civil War broke out, many Pins declined to join the Union Army opting instead to engage in guerrilla warfare against Confederate Cherokees here at home. The Pins' tactics took many forms and were often brutal. If you're desperate for resources, you'll often do desperate things to get those resources. And, and that is no less true of women who were living through war. If the Pins come by, they see someone is doing very prosperous, they may take them as a uh, Confederate sympathizer, they'll take their food, a lot of times they'll burn their houses so that they'll leave the area and they cannot use those resources again. And likewise, the, the Confederate troops are doing the same. To be a civilian and be out on your homestead was a very dangerous thing. The Civil War is something that I don't think that we acknowledge enough on how much loss and devastation there was for our people at that point. Um, not only the loss of life, but you had so many Cherokees just fleeing the nation. We were at war with each other a lot. The Civil War resulted in the death of more than one-fifth of the Cherokee population. One-third of married Cherokee women became widows, and many children became orphans. Once the war is over with, we see things in, in the Cherokee Nation that we'd never seen before, like an orphanage. You know, we see, um, you know, the creation of, of an insane asylum. There was not a family that was living in Cherokee Nation that was not affected by this war. After the Civil War, as the Cherokee Nation slowly begins the task of rebuilding what was lost, the Pins quietly begin to merge back into Cherokee society at large. 
Traditionalists and so-called progressive Cherokees work to heal long-standing rifts. That there is a political realignment that happens after the Civil War. John Ross is dead. We have Stan Waddy dying shortly thereafter. And so these old um, personalities that are attached to those political divides are no longer in the mix. And then you don't read or hear much about them after the Civil War. I don't think we'll ever know who, who all was a Penn Indian. The Pins remain an enduring mystery in Cherokee Nation's past, a family secret that new generations continue to guard closely.